One of the Senate's two practicing physicians, Dr. Scott Jensen, announced in April that he would not run again to represent District 47, which comprises almost all of Carver County. I spoke with Senator-elect Julia Coleman, who easily won the election, and I began by asking why she decided to throw her hat in the ring. That is my favorite question to ask because it's a very unique story. I was actually nine months pregnant when I announced that I was running for the Minnesota State Senate and actually ended up having my son one week to the day after I announced. And he's a big reason that I got into the race. I was sitting and waiting waiting for someone that held my values that I thought would do good for the Republican Party and for our community to hop into the race. And when that didn't happen, I found myself just sitting up at night worrying about the future, which you tend to do when you start to bring new life into this world. And so decided, you know what, instead of sitting here and worrying, I'm going to throw my hat into the ring and do something about it. And so two weeks to the day after my son was born, we were on the campaign trail and he was on the campaign trail his entire first year of life and uh, I have no regrets whatsoever and I'm so excited to get started working. What was it like to campaign for office for the first time, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, in the midst of a pandemic? This is the first time that I ran for the state legislature. I currently serve on the Chanhassen City Council. Uh, I was elected to that in 2018. It was a much different election year than what I was used to. When I ran for city council, I was used to parades, a dozen or so in-home meet and greets every month you know, really going door to door and being able to have a strong connection with people because they'll invite you into their homes and you'll have those connections and conversations. We had to move everything digital. Now, luckily, I, move, I work in public relations and communications currently. And so that was sort of second nature to me. But I really missed having that day to day contact. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to be doing something like that again soon. You are part of a group of new senators that are going to lower the average age of the Minnesota Senate. In fact, your name will appear in the record books as the youngest, you're 28, female elected to the Minnesota Senate. How do you think that your perspective will contribute to the work of the Senate? That's a fantastic question. And one of the things that I heard consistently on the campaign trail where people were so excited about my candidacy because of my unique situation. I'm a mother of a one-year-old and I have a set of twins on the way. And so I am walking in the shoes of parents right now, trying to figure out how to survive in this pandemic, working from home with children, thinking about your finances, your job, your future. And so I know the struggles that new moms and new dads are going with. My husband's in the thick of it with me. And so I hope that by bringing that unique perspective to the Capitol, that I can have those hard yet important critical conversations about how we can make life easier and better for the parents and the next generation of Minnesotans. And to piggyback on that, your, your experience in that just a little bit more, you, as you mentioned, you have a young family. And in fact, you told KSTP that you were bombarded with messages from people who said that you cannot be both a good mother and a good state senator. Uh, when you first announced your candidacy, you have said that you look forward to proving them wrong. But is it time for attitudes like that to change? It absolutely is. In fact, I was shocked when I started receiving those questions and I would be on the phone with voters and I would hear those questions and comments and I would have to get off the phone and go talk to my husband for a second to just vent and get it off my chest and then dive right back into the work because you can't let those comments hold you down. But in my conversations with legislators who are fathers that are, have young families, they're not asked those questions. And I am in a family where we equally share the responsibilities of the home, of the upbringing of the children. And so I think that if you're going to ask those questions, they need to be asked fairly. But in all honesty, it's not just legislators. It is all moms and dads that are working constantly throughout the day and figuring out how to balance that with their children. You can be a good parent and a good dedicated employee, elected official, brain surgeon, what have you. You were an intern in both the Minnesota Senate and in the governor's office. What did you gain from those experiences and did those experiences in any way inspire you to become an elected official yourself? 
They were very interesting experiences. I started interning in the governor's office for Mark Dayton when I had no political ambitions, no political ideology even. I think I was about 18 years old at the time and wanted a resume line item that would stand out uh, for, I thought at the time, medical school. Uh, times and plans have changed since then. But I wanted to give each shot a fair side. We didn't really talk about politics when I grew up and my parents are both on opposite sides of the aisle. So I thought I would just soak it all in and really learn and not just say I'm stuck to one ideology because this is what I was raised with or this is what I believe. And so I then interned in the Senate Republican Caucus and learned a lot. I found out that's where my beliefs and my values lied. Uh, but what I learned along the way was that both sides are filled with good people. They just have different ideas about how to do the best for their constituents and the people of Minnesota. And so I think that this polarized uh, political climate that we're living in is not really serving anybody. And I hope to help start tacking away at that and you know, getting it back to a more civilized discussion. You wrote on your campaign website that you won the title of Miss Minneapolis in 2014. You said that that platform allowed you to travel the United States and to speak about the importance of breaking the stigma surrounding mental health. Why is this important to you and what does that kind of change look like? This is important to me because I actually ended up losing a close friend from high school and college to suicide. And I firmly believe that we don't talk about this enough as, as a society. And I had to do a little bit of soul searching and realize that I personally had been hiding my depression and anxiety that I was experiencing in college from the entire world. And what was that doing to my friends and my peer group? Was that showing openness or was that showing shame? And therefore, do, could they feel like they could talk about their experiences with me? And so I decided no more. I do not want to lose another single friend to this uh, epidemic really and so decided I was going to go speak about this issue near and dear to my heart. I partnered up with a local organization that is passionate about suicide prevention and just started telling my story everywhere and as an elected official I plan to keep doing that. A lot of people think that if you're in the public eye you need to hide what you have gone through in your life and I wholeheartedly disagree. I think that this is a great platform to shed a light on a serious issue and do everything I can to destigmatize receiving help and seeking out uh, the advice of friends, counselors, what have you, when it comes to mental illness. And finally, your father-in-law is former United States Senator Norm Coleman. I wonder, has he offered you any advice? I like to say when everyone asks that question that just being around Norm is a learning experience. The man is a machine, he never stops working, and you pick up things along the way just by being in the same room as him. You learn how deals are made, you learn how to be diplomatic, you learn how to strategize. And so just by being around him these last few years, I have learned quite a bit. He is very big on me being my own person, my own legislator, having my own you know, agenda and my own strategies. He'll, he'll offer advice if I ask it, uh, but just being around him, you learn so much and I hope to be able to continue doing that for quite some time. Senator-elect Julia Coleman, it has been a pleasure, thank you. Thank you.